Hello everyone and welcome to what could very well be the game of the tournament. Uh, I'm not gonna spoil anything, uh, so uh, let's di uh, let's just dive straight into it. I will, however, however mention that uh, Nodrebek is leading the tournament by half a point and the one trailing by half a point is Parham Maksulu. So uh, uh, should Parham win, he has excellent chances of winning the event. Uh, and if Nodrebek uh, was to win by any chance, then he will win the event one full round before the tournament finishes as he will uh, be un uh, uncatchable. Uh, so let's uh, check it out. Uh, amazing game, like I said, probably probably the best game of the event. Nodrebek uh, with the white pieces opens with pawn to e4. Uh, c5 by uh, Parham going for the Sicilian defense. Knight of 3, d6, we have d4. Captures, captures, and now knight to f6. That was knight captures on d4 in case anyone is just um, listening, not watching. Knight to c3 and pawn to a6. The knight of uh, Sicilian is on the board uh, and pawn to h3, the, uh, Adams, uh, the Adams attack. And I was very happy to see this as it's what I've been using... Uh, well, maybe for the past six months against uh, the Sicilian and uh, against the Knight of End, uh, having uh, very nice results. We have pawn to e5 and now knight to b3. Knight to e2 is the main line, but um, knight to b3 second most popular. Bishop to e7, we have bishop to e3 and bishop to e6. We have queen to f3, knight b to d7 and pawn to g4. Okay, nothing new uh, here. These are all very standard ideas in the Adams attack. Pawn to h6, stopping pawn to g5. Queenside castles and of course rook to c8. So black will have a very unpleasant pressure along the c file and the white will try to utilize d5 and f5 squares to go after the black king. Uh, knight to d5 and uh, knight to f8 now. Uh, we have, uh, well, uh, no moves here are king to b1 and bishop to b6. But here we have bishop to d3 and it is now as of move 13 that we have a completely new game. But I would just like to mention if someone plays bishop to b6 here against you, uh, don't just run away with the queen. You should sacrifice the queen here with bishop captures on d5. And if bishop captures on d8, you will also take a nice central pawn here attacking the white queen and after the queen moves you also take on d8 and you have um, uh, two pieces for the queen and also a nice pawn you have the center you have the bishop pair uh, you will have a great game objectively black is better here so you know if someone plays it against you but here we have bishop to d3 like i said a completely new move uh, knight to g6 and now rook h to e1 since the king is still in the center of the board no point in starting a king side attack just yet uh, knight to d7 shifting the knight over to uh, c5 but also controlling b6 here as uh, well uh, you, uh, there's a lot of pressure on b6 for the moment uh, king to b1 always a useful move and bishop to g5 offering a trade of bishops we have pawn to c4 uh, strengthening the knight on d5 also stopping pawn to b5 and uh, castles king side by parham we have bishop to f1 uh, the bishop now nicely controls the uh, pawn on h3 so if it um uh, you know, gets uh, attacked, it will be defended. We have knight to h4 attacking the queen and bishop captures on g5. h captures uh, and queen to d3. So uh, it was sort of a, an offer of a queen trade, but uh, of course, uh, yeah, you decline this with white. Uh, knight to g6 and now we have knight to e3. I'm going for that f5 square, which is where the knight usually wants to go. Uh, in the Adams attack, rook to c6. Also the d6 pony saying, so you have to do something about this. Rook to c6 defending and now queen back to d2. Uh, we have b6 and now knight back to d5. We have pawn to a5 uh, and pawn to a4. And it's a very solid setup here that uh, Nodrebek has on the queen side. Uh, the b5 square nicely defended and uh, Parham has to figure out how to go after the, the white king or, you know, create some, some play here. So he goes knight to f4, puts pressure on the h3 pawn, but okay, it's not hanging for the moment. Uh, rook to e3 uh, and pawn to g6. So it's a beautiful knight. Uh, also, the knight on d5 is quite beautiful. Uh, so you know, if if, uh, if you want to trade, Parham really wants uh, Noderbeck to capture on f4, and Noderbeck well would very much enjoy if Parham would capture because then uh, he would just win material. So here, knight back to c3 uh, and knight to f6, getting the other knight into the game. Pawn to f3 now defending, and also uh, luckily uh, the bishop is on f1, so you don't have to worry about knight captures on h3. King to h7, uh, and now knight back to d5. We have king back to g7, and pawn to h4. Nodrebek now goes after the, the black king. Bishop captures on d5. C captures opening up the c file. 
uh, and rook back to c8 now we have h captures and g5 attacking the knight knight h7 going after the g5 pawn and bishop to a6 and this is a most unpleasant move as it attacks the rook uh, and if the rook moves away from the c file then Noderbeck will just shift uh, the attention of his own rooks to the c file so rook c7 uh, keeping an eye on the c file rook to c1 captures on c1 queen captures on c1 and now just knight captures on g5 you could also go for queen to a8 to go after the bishop to try and kick it away and uh, grab the c8 square for your rook uh, but then queen to f1 and the bishop is nicely defended so here just knight captures on g5 uh, and queen to c6 uh, also here uh, king to a2 uh, is a uh, is a bit um, uh, safer uh, but uh, a queen to c6 uh, also can be played however uh, it uh, not as uh, potent uh Probably it was better to have the queen rook battery than the rook queen battery. But okay, knight to g2 attacks the rook, rook to c3, and now knight to e1, putting pressure on the f3 pawn. Knight to d2 defending the pawn, and now rook to h8, preparing to bring the rook into the attack. Rook to e3 attacking the knight, and now just rook to h2. Uh, basically a, an offer of a trade, uh, the, the e1 knight for the d2 knight, but uh, just knight back to f1. Noderbeck not feeling like trading a pair of knights. Knight to c2, now offering a trade of pair of rooks. So you take my rook, I take your rook. But again, Noderbeck not interested. Rook to c3, and now knight to b4, attacking the queen. Uh, and this is where the fun really starts. Noderbeck decides to sacrifice his queen. He just plays knight captures on h2. And okay, knight captures on c6. You, you have no other, other move. Uh, D captures, and now, well, if you allow c7, the pawn is defended, uh, c8 covered by the bishop, uh, Noderbeck just uh, wins this game on the next move, so you have to play knight to e6, it is Parham's only move here, guarding the c7 square, and now bishop back to c4, uh, knight to c7, also knight to c5 is fine, you just have to put something on that c file to prevent the, the pawn from moving forward, uh, and now knight to f1, getting the knight into the game, as uh, for the moment there's no way for you to actually start Start advancing the fast c pawn queen to e8 and now bishop to d5 just nicely defending the pawn and also you would very much welcome a capture on d5 as you would have then a defended fast pawn on c6 so pawn to b5 and now uh, well a captures uh, is perfectly fine for example a captures knight captures and then you just bring the rook to b3 another way goes knight to e3 so he gives up the a4 pawn for some counterplay b captures on a4 and now rook to c2 uh, but uh, yeah, this is uh, objectively not maybe the, the best way to go, but I mean, both of them are getting low on time. Uh, objectively, uh, I mean, this is uh, an, an no time to be talking about objectivity at all. We have queen to b8, preparing to, to advance the pawn to a3, and now bishop to c4. Uh, we have pawn to a3, and now knight to d5. Luckily uh, luckily for Noderbeck, there's no way to actually put pressure on that b2 pawn with the rook on the second rank nicely defending, and now just knight back to e6. You do not want to trade knights here, you just want to keep an eye on the c7 square, uh, you know, with uh, two pieces at least so here pawn to b3 uh, and now comes knight to d4 uh, pawn to b3 is a mistake by Noderbeck with queen to a7 Parham uh, could take the win uh, but it's uh, I mean an incredibly difficult uh, line to spot king to a2 now knight to d4 and now after pawn to c7 for example you have knight captures on c2 and after c8 queen you have queen d4 with an unstoppable checkmate so that's the that's the issue here uh, and Parham obviously saw that line but he started with knight to d4 and now it's different now c7 comes with tempo attack the queen and now if you go to a7 then just rook to c3 uh, the queen to a7 does nothing now so queen to h8 was played and now comes rook to d2 uh looks looks very dangerous but it, uh, it it's possible it's just possible so queen to h1 with check we have king to a2 and now queen to c1 attacking the rook and also threatening checkmate if the rook leaves the control of the second rank so rook to h2 and now pawn to a4 uh this is a I mean, this is such a beautiful move by Parham that, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I will be very sad if Parham does not win this game. 
the point is that if you now uh, bring a queen into the game, then uh, capture some b3 with check, and there is no other move than bishop captures, and then just queen captures on c8. So that's the idea. So after this uh, move, uh, Nordbeck plays uh, the strongest move, pawn to g5, and now he's asking, what do you play here? Do you, do you capture on g5? Well, you could, but if you capture on g5, then just c8 queen, and you don't, you have no counterplay. So knight captures on f3, only move for Parham, attacks the rook, rook to f2, now a captures on b3, bishop captures on b3, and now knight to d2. This is the only way to not lose the game for Parham, uh, but Noderbeck, uh, Noderbeck's next move is, of course, uh, a must, rook captures on d2, queen captures, and now king captures on a3. Uh, now, of course, you are in check, so you don't have time to get your queen. King captures on a3, and now it's a draw, but only if uh, Parham plays the correct continuation, but playing the correct con continuation here uh, with little time on the clock is impossible to calculate. Uh, queen to a5 was played, the, the, the correct move is queen to c1. Now, the reason why this is correct, and I'm just going to show it to you because, well, you're not going to believe it. Queen to c6 check, king to a5, queen to c5 with check, king to a6, and now you have queen to a3 with check, taking the bishop. So king b7, you take the bishop, and now after knight to b6, threatening to queen the pawn, you have queen to d3. And you don't care that white gets a pawn, uh, a, a queen uh, for a pawn because you will be up material, not up material, you will have three pawns for the knight. And with the white king so wide in the open, you have all the drawing uh, resources you need. CA queen, you're going to capture another pawn. And after king to b8, uh, you have three uh, extra pawns for the knight. And this is uh, a, a draw, however you play it. However, after queen to a5 check, it is no longer a draw. Uh, bishop to a4, we have queen to a6, and now king to b4. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, this is absolutely beautiful. The king marching towards the black queen. Uh, I mean, that's just poetic. Queen to b7 with check, and now bishop to b5. And bishop to b5, a mistake by Noderbeck. You have to play king to c4. But after bishop to b5, it's again a draw. Uh, but uh, I, I believe this is the hardest move to play in the entire game so far. So uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find the only move that doesn't lose the game for Parham uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, abomination. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is King to F8. That's the move that doesn't lose the game, and uh, I will tell you why. Uh, uh, the reason is that it gets away from the uh, uh, fr from the knight here. You can't just uh, keep the king on g7. Parham moved, uh, uh, for example. Uh, what do you play? You don't. You can't move any of the pawns. You don't really have a good square for your queen. If you play something like queen to c8, uh, you just uh, give uh, uh, valuable squares to uh, to the white pieces. Bishop now takes control over everything. The pawn controls this. There's really nothing for you to do with um, uh, with the queen and it's uh again a position where, where, where you have no moves if you play a queen to a6 then bishop d7 and the queening square is guarded so you can't play at that king to f8 on the other hand uh, after a move like king to c4 on pinning now you really want to play bishop to d7 and promote this pawn into a queen you have queen c8 and now uh, th there is no bishop to uh, to, to d7, but it's uh, you know it's so funny because Parham played king to h7 uh, with the same idea, just getting the king out of the way. But now he runs into the very unfortunate king to c4, and now queen to c8 no longer works because if you play queen to c8 now, there's this nasty bishop to d7 move, and if the queen captures knight to f6 check, picks up the queen, you get another queen, you do whatever whatever you want. So Parham brings the king back, he realizes what he did, uh, but it is uh, too late. He is down a tempo now, bishop d7, Noder begins control over the c8 square, queen to a6 with check, we have king to b3, queen to b7 with check, king to c2, and now queen to a6, there is no more stopping the queening of the uh, white queen. Uh, c8 queen, and now queen to e2 with check. We have king to b3, queen captures on e4, and here... Uh, well, Noderbeck has many winning moves, but he decided to be poetic to the very last, and he played queen to g8 with check, and it was in this position, on move uh, 68, that Parham Maxulu resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Of course, once the king captures the queen, knight f6 check, picks up the black queen, and that's it, king g7, knight captures on e4, and you are now up two pieces, so of course, completely winning. There's even a, a photo of this moment... Uh, 
Uh, wait, I'm just gonna show it to you real quickly if I have it somewhere here. Pretty sure I do. Uh, let me just check real quickly. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had it somewhere. Hmm. Pretty sure I have. If I if I don't have, yeah, I do have it. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, look at look at the look Parham gave uh, Noderbeck. I mean, this is uh from the live feed. Uh, let me just make that a little bit smaller. Look at this. Look at the look. I mean, that is that is one one look that you give uh, give your opponent when I mean when when you're actually scared. I mean, what what was I playing against? What is this? Is this is this even a human being? I mean, crazy stuff. And uh, yeah, what does this mean for the for the tournament standings? It means that Noderbeck is uh, uh, the winner of the Prague Chess Festival one full round before the tournament finishes. And what does this mean for the live ratings? Well, uh, check this out. Uh, Noderbeck is now uh, officially uh, world number four. Not officially. I mean, on the live officially on the live ratings, he's world number four. Uh, he overtakes world champion Ding Liren on the live ratings list. So yes, Noderbeck Abdusatarov is now higher rated than world classical champion uh, Ding Liren. Absolutely incredible. Next on the list is Hikaru, then Fabiano, and then, of course, Magnus Carlsen. Can Noderbeck take it all the way? Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what's happening. He's playing incredible chess. He's incredibly strong. Uh, yeah, we've already said we would love to see him in the candidates, but maybe in the next cycle. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Beautiful stuff by by Noderbeck, uh, by Parham as well. I mean, uh, you can't play a game like this if uh, if uh, your opponent doesn't cooperate. So Parham, <laughs> every game Parham plays is absolutely incredible. Uh, but here, yeah, Noderbeck just uh, uh, took the full point. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Don, Don Che on YouTube, Kerakesh Tibor, Kellen is the best girlfriend, bulletchestthriller.com, and uh, Top from uh, Tipperary from your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.